on the latest UK numbers and the, U and the EU economy. I spoke with John Authors, he's a US investment commentator for the Financial Times. I asked him if there is reason for optimism. But in terms of what really makes a difference to people's sense of well-being, it's that average earnings number. We, we still have quite a long way to go before pulling out of, uh, out of that trough. Also, if you take a look at supply manager data, where you uh, uh, survey people who are actually running businesses, looking at what the orders are coming in and out, for manufacturing and for construction, you saw quite worrying dips this month in those numbers. They're still broadly positive. They're still suggesting the economy is expanding rather than contracting, but they're going in the wrong direction. So yes, there is room for optimism, but it has to be fairly tempered optimism. We're, we're still only recovering from what's been a very bad patch. So explain to me the reasoning behind the Bank of England downgrading its growth out mm. outlook. What are the factors behind this? Well, then, first of all, as I was explaining, the, the, uh, the, the manufacturing numbers look, look weak, similarly construction numbers look weak, and the thing that they're most concerned about is productivity, which not uh, unsurprisingly is something that the Bank of England itself can't control. The UK is still not operating efficiently enough, not generating enough uh, with uh, the assets it has. Arguably, that's because UK companies aren't investing enough or people who've just been beaten in the election would argue because the government isn't investing enough. But there is still this problem that the uh, productive capacity of the uh, economy is weaker than everyone had hoped. What about interest rates? When do you expect that to rise? We are back to the central expectation many had, had expected for a while that the US, the Fed here in the US will be the first uh, major central bank to start raising rates uh, and that the Bank of England will be following them. Uh, given, given the relative strengths for the two, of the, the two economies, the US is looking more robust at the moment than the UK. That makes sense. And can, a British, can British consumers take a rise in, in interest rates, especially if there's no hike in wages, all those homeowners mm. with mortgages? Uh, you know, yeah. you got to wonder its impact on the economy at that point. Well, the, we mentioned homeowners, and that's a fascinating point. And obviously, inequality is a, uh, a, a very important issue in the, in the campaign. If you are asset rich, if you're holding UK stocks, or particularly if you're holding uh, a UK house, then uh, you're feeling very good about things because UK house price inflation continues to be remarkable. We are talking about a 350% increase in the price of the average UK house, according to Nationwide, since Tony Blair came in, vastly more than inflation, vastly more even than the stock market. If you had enough money to buy a house in the first place, you are feeling great. If you didn't, you are feeling all that much worse because you have been left behind mm -hmm. and it grows ever harder to buy a house. I got to ask you about the financial situation in Greece and yeah. its impact on UK economy. Well, Greece in itself is a small economy uh, and at this point it has no impact. Obviously the question is how does this situation get resolved? The Eurozone is by far the UK's biggest trading partner. If Greece leaves, that is an unprecedented event. It changes the nature of the Eurozone because it becomes uh, an entity which, uh, which a member can leave if it wants to. At the moment, the idea is that it's a fused entity that nobody can leave whether they want to or not. If you do get to the point of a Greek exit, that will create terminal, ter turmoil and confusion in the Eurozone. That can only affect the UK because it's only 17 miles away across the English Channel. It's by far the biggest uh, trading partner. So the Greek situation at present has no effect, really. It, there is a small but significant risk that it could have a huge impact on the UK. And John, do you think the Bank of England is already thinking about the impact if Britain leaves the EU? <laughs> that is... Big if. <laughs> I am sure they're thinking about it because it's their job to think about it. And as far as I'm aware, they're not thinking aloud about it because uh, that would be intervening in politics, which a central banker has to be very careful about doing. Uh, the City of London in general, um, the City of London, uh, which includes many, obviously, people on the right of British politics who are very happy that uh, 
that uh, David Cameron is, is back in with a majority hates the fact that we have uh, a referendum coming up uh, on, uh, on EU membership, both because that will create uncertainty and people in the city never like uncertainty, and because it creates the real risk that uh, we in the UK leave the European Union, which could be very damaging indeed for London's status. London is now a much more important financial centre than, say, Zurich. Uh, that wasn't necessarily true 10 or 20 years ago, and a large part of why uh, London has gained in importance is because it does have that toehold within the European Union.